Whatever that weapon is, Cheetah, it won't work. It's a scanner. Something's happening to you. Did you just call me Cheetah? <laughs> what did you say, nigga? Going dumb and dumber in here. Pockets on Jim Carrey going dumber and dumber. Okay. Justice League Doom is a movie I just rewatched and a movie that I think is better than I remember and that's weird because I loved that movie before I even rewatched it but I think I love it even more now. So let's go ahead and jump into the synopsis. 40 with 30, that's a dick, no stop. Justice League Doom is a 2012 American direct-to-video animated superhero film loosely based on JLA Tower of Babel, a 2000 comic book storyline by writer Mark Wade that ran in the DC comic series JLA. The film script was adapted by writer Dwayne McDovey, rest in peace, and it is directed by Lauren Montgomery, a standalone sequel to Crisis on Two Earths. That's something I typically forget is that this is a sequel to Crisis on Two Earths. The film uses the same character designs by the lead character designer Phil Barrasso, Barrasso, not sure I pronounced that, as well as footage from the film in the opening. It was released on February 28, 2012. The film also features various actors reprising their roles from the DC Animated Universe, which is a very welcome part to this movie, of course. It is the 13th film of the DC Universe animated original movie, so it's only the 13th of these DC animated movies, the ones that are part of this lineup. So uh, let's get acquainted with the cast real quick. I'm just going to put a little montage together. Am I blue? What'd you get him? I'm not saying anything. We're here and spoil the surprise. He can hear that, too. That's for Dan Turpin. Who? The good man you murdered. Stand aside, demon. No. And you know why? Because I'm the Flash. The fastest man alive. Bruce, you didn't get him a gift certificate. No. Cash. How can you not love that cast right there? How can you not just expect this movie to be great just by seeing that, especially if you are a fan of the DCAU as I am? Now let's get into a brief synopsis of the story or the setup of the film. The Justice League and Cyborg stop the Royal Flush Gang's attempted robbery of a diamond vault using complex technology that allows them to pass through solid objects. Meanwhile, Vandal Savage plots to start a new civilization by exterminating two-thirds of the population, and it is revealed that he gave the technology to the gang for testing. Savage hires Mirror Master to hack into the Bat Computer and steal contingency plans devised by Batman to incapacitate his Justice League teammates lest they go rogue. Savage assembles Cheetah, Star Sapphire, Metallo, Bane, Mirror Master, and this guy. The scary guy is Malafa'ak. And offers each of them a large sum of money to simultaneously attack the League members using the plans, which he has altered to be lethal when the supervillains agree he welcomes them to the Legion of Doom. Then it's settled. Welcome to the Legion of Doom. Now we have to get into the team, which consists of Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, The Flash, Martian Manhunter, and not officially until the end, but Cyborg. <laughs> the core six are really the members I always enjoy seeing in Justice League. Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Martian Manhunter, and a Lantern. I prefer Hal Jordan or Jon Stewart. And the seventh member, I'm perfectly okay with being Cyborg. Victor is an intriguing enough character to me, and up to this point we hadn't really seen him in the Justice League, so his inclusion in the film was actually a big step for the character. Sure, he already had Teen Titans before this, but we had never seen the character interact with the Justice League outside of comics until this movie. If they hadn't gone with Cyborg, firstly, I think the movie wouldn't work as well because of this line. I've carefully studied every Justice Leaguer, past and present. I'm with Cyborg. Bring him with you. The plans don't account for him. He could be the key. I believe at least Aquaman would have been a past member of the JL, so Batman would know how to take him out as well. And I have a personal bias towards Hot Girl being in the Justice League because of Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. But Cyborg just seems like the fit here. 
Superman has maybe the dumbest line in the entire movie. Maybe I could move the Earth out of the way. Maybe I could move the Earth out of the way. If... <laughs> you serious? And it takes him entirely too long to take out Metallo. He didn't waste time taking you out earlier in the film, Supes. What are you doing? He's a robot. Come on, Clark. Honestly, Wonder Woman doesn't do much other than fight Cheetah in this movie, yet she's still awesome. You really get to see there's no quit inside of her, and she will go down fighting if she has to, even if she's not fighting the right person. Uh, more on that later. Green Lantern and Batman have the best exchanges in DC animation, I swear to you. They have probably the most memorable exchanges in this film. Their interactions with one another are actually a very good pinpoint device to see how drastic the tonal shift from the beginning to midway point of the movie is. And really the ring can symbolize all of this as well as when Hal takes off the ring, it's as if the will and hope of the world has been lost along with that. You get a glimpse of Flash working at Forensics, which I appreciated. Also confirmation that this is Barry Allen, although Michael Rosenbaum voiced Wally West originally in the DCAU. So the slight changeup was a bit interesting, even though that version of Flash was basically a Wally Barry hybrid with Wally's name. Either way, it was nice hearing Rosie's voice as the character again. As per usual, he has quips and is cracking jokes when taking out the villains, the Royal Flush Gang at the beginning, and primarily Mirror Master at every other part of the movie. He feels like the comic relief character, but still a very important member of the team, and that's what this movie does well. It gets the balance right. No character in the movie feels wasted or put there for only filler. Flash also has a pretty heavy line that could be easy to overlook, but it really hit me this time. You think that'll slow it down enough? Just. But you make one misstep. Got it. At least if it doesn't work, nobody dies but me. Martian Manhunter sadly doesn't have a ton to do in this movie aside from be on fire and take down his villain. His telepathy isn't working most of the movie. He does some cool stuff in the opening against the Royal Flush Gang. Then, of course, the final fight against, I'm gonna try it, guys, Ma Alala Fleck. See, I felt. Why are you here, Malafaak? To you get to see some cool stuff visual with the Martian shape shifting, much of it looking like a kaiju fight. But Batman, this is potentially the best and most dangerous Batman has ever been in one of these DC animated movies, or possibly any movie as of now, honestly. I mean, the whole concept of the film is showing how Batman can systematically take down the Justice League. And how in the wrong hands these plans can be altered to kill the Justice League. So yeah, this is obviously something more people are aware of in 2021, but in 2012 when this film released, not everyone knew Batman was as dangerous as he really is. I do love this side of Batman being explored, and it feels like something that still hasn't been too overdone. Before this movie especially, because outside of comics we only had glimpses to how Batman could in the DCAU primarily in JL, JLU, and Batman Beyond, and this movie just goes full throttle. I also love how it is kind of Batman vs. the Justice League, without actually being Batman vs. the Justice League. It's 100% a Justice League vs. Legion of Doom movie, with Batman standing at the forefront as the center. get the Batwing ready. The Justice League is under attack. By whom? By me! The only one I really want to touch on here since we are going to get into the other six in a moment is Vandal Savage, the main villain of the movie who is essentially taking Rachel Gould's place from the comics. Vandal Savage is of course immortal and I understand that this is something important for them to get across, which is why this happened. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm very glad they didn't spend too long explaining that away though, they know we have seen that before in Justice League and that's not what the story is about, it touched very briefly on his past and his abilities, which is all that was needed for everything to make sense. So Savage's plan is to basically kill the Justice League, then proceed to destroy two thirds of the Earth, and after this he and the six other villains mentioned prior will begin a new regime where each will rule a portion of what is left of the world. So, very high stakes, obviously. If part one of this plan had succeeded, we would have been in for a very different movie. And I like the line Bane gives when Savage is talking all of this out. This being phase two as the Justice League had already been handled at this point, or so they thought. How do you propose to kill that many people? Even without the Justice League, they will fight. 
Now on to the core of this movie, the contingency plan. I'm gonna do my thing, purple not green, blue face king. First of all, these kind of remind me of saw traps for some reason, especially flashes because he gets a freaking bomb bolted to his wrist trying to save an old woman. But anyway, let's start with the first plan that doesn't consist of Batman's contingency plans, and that is Batman's parents' bodies being stolen and their caskets taken away from the grave. Bruce is lured to the graveyard where Bane is waiting. Bane then proceeds to take advantage of Batman's vulnerable position burying him alive. It's not rocket science to take Superman out of commission. All you need is some kryptonite. You know, like a kryptonite bullet, that will work. How they go about taking Wonder Woman out of commission is very interesting, extremely smart, and makes a ton of sense. She's one of the few characters that doesn't really have a given weakness. So the only way to beat her really is to do it outright or to fight her to the point of exhaustion. And of course the latter would be Batman's best bet given Superman isn't available. And that's exactly what happens. Wonder Woman is drugged and she believes she's only fighting Cheetah the entire time, although she's aware she's fighting multiple Cheetahs. She just doesn't understand what's happening to her and keeps going although none of it makes sense. I chalked that down to the drugs. Don't do drugs kid. Only the right ones. Green Lanterns is probably the most fucked up as he's lured to an underground bunker area that blows up basically as soon as he confronts the hostiles. So Hal believes he has failed and holds the dead girl in his arms. He's then confronted by Star Sapphire who looks very similar to the dead woman in his hands, which is even brought up so this conversation with Sapphire basically breaks whatever will Hal may have left if there was even any before she showed herself. It's later revealed that none of this was actually real, the dead bodies are fake, androids, and Hal was infected by a diluted version of Scarecrow's fear toxin to make him believe he made a bad call and everything that had happened wasn't only real to him, but was also entirely his fault. Very fucked up, Bruce. As mentioned at the beginning of this segment, Flash gets a bomb that's set to detonate either after 60 seconds of inactivity or when he decelerates bolted to his wrist while trying to save a grandma who's trapped in Mirror Master's hostage box. So once he begins running, Barry can't slow down. I'm very glad Flash decided to wait for what Batman had to say before actually trying anything though, because ice is basically the only material dense enough for Flash to phase through and come out in one piece. <laughs> Uh, I've got a fresh lead. Carry on. Now for the final member of the team that the plans account for, Martian Manhunter. Now much like Superman, taking Manhunter out isn't rocket science. One of his biggest, if not biggest weakness, is fire, which is not hard to come by on Earth. So drugging a soda with some kind of substance that has an odd effect on Martian DNA and also is mainly made up of magnesium, which is highly flammable, then lighting the man on fire is a good way to get him out of your hair. And as mentioned earlier, the plans didn't yet account for Cyborg. He's not even an official member of the League until the end of the movie. And the plans also didn't account for Batman himself, but of course Bruce isn't just that arrogant. He always has a plan for himself to be stopped if it were ever needed, and that is the Justice League. Now I'm not really going to touch on the actual Justice League versus Legion of Doom battle at the end because it's just kind of your standard hero versus villains fight to save the universe. I don't have any problems with it whatsoever, I think it, you know, bridges what came before and the conclusion as it should. I get why it's there, it's entertaining enough. There's just not really much to talk about. So on to the conclusion. Feel like Batman went out robbing cause I keep a bad phone. This is the last Wikipedia tidbit I have. At the Justice League Watchtower, Superman reports that Vandal Savage has been found guilty of crimes against humanity and is sentenced to life without parole by the World Court. The Justice League officially adds Cyborg to their roster and Superman calls for a vote on whether Batman should be allowed to remain a League member. Batman defends his action and criticizes the others for not understanding the potential danger of a rogue Justice League before quitting the team outright. Batman going out like a motherfucking badass, like Batman does. When Superman asks if Batman had a plan to stop himself if he were to go rogue, Batman states that the Justice League itself is his plan. With his trust in Batman assured, Superman hands him the kryptonite bullet and teleports him out of the watchtower. Okay, we just gotta talk about this moment real quick. Because it's the perfect ending 
to the movie. Batman and Superman's relationship is the most important in the Justice League. I mean, those two along with Wonder Woman, they are the core of the Justice League. They are the trinity of DC. Everyone knows that. And just the display of trust between Batman and Superman in that moment, it's honestly orgasmic, guys. It's so fucking good. Like, can you think of a better ending for a movie like this? You're still so arrogant, you didn't bother to come up with a plan to stop yourself. I do have a plan. It's called the Justice League. This movie is honestly near perfect for me when it comes to small budget animation, which is what all these movies are. It's still not my all time favorite DC animated movie, but it is damn close. And there's more of these I need to take a look back on but it's quite possible this movie could move up the ranks. Which is quite impressive because it was already a top 10 DC animated movie for me. I would give this film an A. This is Batman at his best. Most of the main DCAU cast is back for the film. This is actually the only movie Michael Rosenbaum came back for, and he is my favorite Flash of all time. This isn't gonna work, is it? Not a chance. Hey, where you going? Come on. I had dinner with two women at the same time. So just for those reasons alone, it will likely always hold a special place in my heart. I'm hoping we can get the cast back, Rosie and all, for one more movie in the very near future. Here's to holding out hope, and here's to Batman being a badass. There's a good balance of characters, and basically each of them are handled very well. I think this movie is exactly what it needed to be, and so much more. Hey, real quick, so this video took a while to record and edit. It was a process. So if you guys want more videos like this, please show this one some love. Share it, like it, leave a comment on your thoughts of the film, or let me know what DC animated movie you'd like me to cover next. It would be highly appreciated and help warrant the amount of time it takes to put a video like this together. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see all you sexy motherfuckers next time. Maybe I could move the earth out of the way. Out. We should take Bikini Bottom and push it somewhere else!